Okay. I'm going to do a quick summary because uh, Ed has requested I do a little summary about what we're doing here again today. But we're finished the discussion, so you should have your city's design. Um, so just one more time, uh, I work for a company called the Internet of Living Intentions. We are focused on building the communities of the future through the consumer eye. A lot of technology is getting built today through, hey, we've got these new designs, innovation, applications, and it gets embedded and then they hope the consumer learns how to use that technology and adopts it. So we're coming from the other side, which is what your experiment was this morning. Like, how do you take a persona of a person, I'll use Mike over here, he's a recent graduate, social, athletic, a kid cook, how do we ask that consumer to live in our city of the future? How does technology, applications, infrastructure, and future generations that have grown up with technology, unlike some of us, I mean, like, I don't remember having anything like a smartphone going through university or, or high school. So we look at that and say, okay, from that consumer's perspective, what do we need to have a good quality of life, to be sustainable in our cities, and to be financially awarded um, towards the end of our journey as we get there. So we asked you today to come up with the clarity of a vision around what city you want to design for 2030 using your persona. And hopefully at the end of this today, your persona is wanting to move to your city. If not, well, you guys might have to stay after school. Okay, so I'm going to start over here with Ken's group. Uh, Ken, if you could read out who your persona was um, and then just talk about what you designed. We'll give you five minutes and then we'll move on to the next guy. Okay, we are city number five. Perspective is a single adult, wealthy professional, has a pet, travels a fair amount, uh, tends to leave the city on the weekend for travel or work, and has some health concerns as diabetic. They're already happening and they're being integrated. So we took it in a different direction and said, okay, um, is all of our data public knowledge? Does our neighbor know that we're, we have health issues? And, and if so, how does that change the relationship between us and our neighbors? Um, we have shared resources. We have increasing numbers of resource constraints everywhere in the world. So uh, why should one guy get more water? Why is one person able to take you know, a greater share of the healthcare dollars? What if uh, I should be eating healthy because I have diabetes, but I'm not? How does that affect the rest of the system? I, I end up using more of the healthcare dollars that everyone has to share in these kind of a things. So we, um, we talked about the automatic transportation. Your, your commute is no longer a commute because you can work in the vehicle. You can take calls, you can do things, you're not busy driving. Uh, you might force the downtown city to, to not have any self-driving vehicles. So now everything's autonomous, it reduces the congestion, you're not spending as much time going place to place. Uh, distribution of things like parks, now you have less, maybe less roads, you have the ability to have more parks close by. It's easier to take care of your pet, even in an urban uh, scenario. Uh, if you are leaving for the weekend, um, security becomes a different discussion because now you know, maybe everybody knows you've left. Uh, so do your neighbors chip in? Does everybody watch your place like you have in a small town? Or do you have an automatic update to just constantly let you, let you know everything is okay? Uh, one thing we got to just at the end was talking about failure. You know, what happens when these systems aren't working? What's your, what's your fallback scenario? What do you do if you suddenly don't have that information? So, probably about at the end of my time here. No, fantastic. You guys did a great job. Good job. Thank you. Hey, Tom, if you could read your persona and then tell us what you came up with. So, City One, we changed that to Miami. <laughs> and I read somewhere, I think it was American Airlines, that Miami's the number two for private equity investments and startups and all of this and international culture and springboard into Latin America. So, a lot of opportunity. 49 years old means I'm looking at pretty close to the wrong side of 50 pretty soon. And then 10 years wrong side of 60. So, um, family three children. We've already given you a thumbs down. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm trying, to, trying, to, trying to fit the part here, you know. I just, uh, I can't. Out of my Family three children. Okay. They're always going to be your children, but you're looking down the road, grandchildren, retire in 10 years. So 
what the manager is looking for is somewhere that they can go in and have some opportunity, um, basically uh, create something, they get some bragging rights, something that uh, works so they want to live there. So, you know, kind of some of the things we thought about is packaging offers to um, the demographics we're focusing on, the demographics, you know, my, my persona. Um, going to like a uh, Miami Heat game, right? I don't want to go down and deal with traffic, so I'm sitting home with my 4K TV. So how do I get them to actually go down to the games? They don't want to deal with parking, they got too much to drink, they're not comfortable with the local transit. We package an offering to them that includes local transit or an option for Uber for the last mile. It includes going to the game. It's driving traffic after the game to the local uh, establishments, the Irish pub. It's generating uh, advertising revenue because within the Irish pub, I got local microbreweries that are being offered. But I package this up and serve it as a service on um, kind of smell. We were smell. We were talking about almost artificial intelligence, but we're basically creating efficiency, revenue generation through sponsorships. Fits the lifestyle of those demographics and why I'd want to live there. Support the local businesses. It brings in investment, again, because the technology is going to grow. This platform is going to plug into it. Um, you're going to be able to change things. I want to eventually capture uh, the vacationers, you know, Carnival Cruise Lines down in Miami and things like that. But it's, it's got to be efficient and it's got to be something that people want to use in, in that, that demographic some more than retire. And it's served up to them in a way that they're willing to try public transportation. They're willing to continue to go to the games, although things get harder for them per se when they can take the easier path of sitting home with a 4K TV. So the technology there again had to do with integrating all the little pieces, the last mile, getting off the transit system to maybe a lift car, taking them to their um, you know uh, homeowner associated condo kind of thing where they don't because they don't want to deal with yard service and all this other. But by the same token, that package offers up stuff like plumbing, this and that, and whatever for support. So there again, that's what I'm looking for. Um, it's still a kind of smart city, but it's not because it's focused on the demographics. That's great. That's kind Thank of you. what we came up with. Thank you. That's excellent. Okay, so, so we represent the retired couple who are, I guess, 15 years past your 49-year-old. If we're fortunate that we've been disciplined and saved some money, which we have, we have disposable income. Uh, we do have some health issues. We like to play golf, and we want to be able to travel to see the grandkids or feel comfortable having the grandkids come easily to see us. Um, so, so basically, a lot of what you said, Tom, are the same requirements in terms of what makes us happy, what makes us want to be part of a city. Um, it's ease of access, um, but we also need it to be a little bit more anticipating our needs as more mature people. So, um, for example, one of the comments was, uh, we are downsizing or we're relocating, so we need to know that we have an option, a lot of variety in, in what type of space will receive us. Is it the, the you know, downsized location that still has the dining room because I want to entertain, I want to have the big family dinners once a year, or is it the urban apartment that is easy to get around, but uh, I don't have to mess with the yard and, and I have a park right down the street. So. Um, the availability of, of parks and nature without the, the maintenance was definitely on the list. Um, transportation on demand is, is definitely important in terms of being able to go to doctor's visits or see the grandkids or get to the airport or whatever the airport's going to be, the helicopter pad, go up on the roof maybe if we're in a, in a high rise. Um, but an alternative to much of that transportation is having services delivered in your home. So telemedicine was a big topic in terms of the availability of it now in Texas in 13, 15 years. By now, we hope that will be well developed. And if it's in Texas, this is an imaginary city that we can dial up the doctor without having to, or the health professional without having to uh, worry about making an appointment and how we're going to get there and how we're going to park. Um, however, when we do need to go somewhere, whether it's the doctor or the movie theater or any, any entertainment or any place at all, ideally what we would like as well are for things to be thought of in terms of access. So uh, open doorways, um, ramps, available wheelchairs for you know temporary use, um, or thinking about the grade of you know public areas, those kinds of 
putting yourself in the shoes of the retiree. And even though I'm a young retiree, I know those are going to be my needs. So when I choose a city, I'm looking for a city that's thought about me 10 to 15 years beyond where I am right now. Safety is a big concern. Uh, we want to feel like we can do all of these things without worrying about uh, our personal safety. And, um, and in, in general, I think we want a, a variety of types of people to interact with. So we're looking at a city that knows how to manage a variety of, uh, of social as well as economic profiles so that we have a lot of diversity and interesting groups of people in different communities. Uh, we also talked about extending our work life. So we like to have the idea of having enough infrastructure and resources that we can work from our home or go to some kind of a community that's a work-related community as a retiree and not really lose that sense of intellectual challenge and, and, and collaboration that comes from hanging out with groups like we're in right now. So um, did I miss anything? Uh, I want to add one little education point because we didn't really talk about this but I was thinking for the grandkids and for any, like if I'm moving to Dallas, one of my biggest hesitations as a parent with younger kids, which would be my kids' kids, um, is I can't put my kids in school unless I'm going to pay 20000 a year in, in private school tuition if I want them to get a quality education. So I think that quality education is like table stakes for any healthy city in the future, and we really have not solved that problem. So uh, anything we can design on that topic would be a, a, a major improvement. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Melanie, you're up. <laughs> So uh, we are um, city, city number four, and, and actually we would like to extend an opportunity for you to come and retire in our city because we think we've got your problem solved. <laughs> so firstly, we are, we are a young family. Um, we have, uh, we're just relocating. We've got some kids. I'm not too sure who the dad is. There's obviously lots of them. <laughs> so we need, uh, we need schools. We, we're also uh, new to the USA, and we had some interesting discussion around exactly what that might mean. And what the city might need to do for us that's a little different for people that are just moving between cities within a country. Um, we are professionals in technology jobs. Uh, and we're very, very keen on biking and, uh, and cooking. Not necessarily doing the cooking, but you know, somewhere between cooking food or, or other. Um, and we didn't actually get around to that in discussion time a whole lot, which is going to make us very, very hungry folks in just a moment. <laughs> so a lot of our discussion was based around schooling, because as you mentioned, Laura, in your group, um, this is certainly one of the key considerations when you're picking somewhere for your young family to move. Schooling and the future of your kids is a big one. Um, so we had some assumptions uh, equally around the kinds of technologies that we think will be somewhat uh, uh, as a given uh, in a couple, couple of years around this 2030 time frame. And we also took some natural resourcing um, into our city assumptions as well. For example, if we're moving into an area and we're relocating specifically to this new city design, um, then it's, it's going to be abundant with natural resources that meet our needs from an outdoorsy perspective, our biking in particular. Um, we have an interesting array of uh, natural resources with mountains, beaches, ski areas, um, and, and various other biking trails. So where that happens geographically, I'm not entirely sure, but there are some assumptions that we have these natural resources that we can get out into nature and take a break from our super high-tech jobs. Um, the other assumption we made was more about the parents of this particular group being uh, early adopters of technology. So it's not that they want to be uh, just using technology in how they live their lives and do their work, but their expectations of technology are very much around the advanced and the leading edge. It's, it's the high expectations of anything from the speed of connectivity, to the interconnectivity, um, to the type of work that they will be doing, being to work on the latest, you know, brightest, you know, new shiny bright technology uh, developments, and also the types of technology that they will be working with in doing their jobs at their companies. Um, we didn't get too much into defining exactly what those types of technologies would, but the expectation is pretty high. Um, that then rolled into our school environment, which is to consider that this is the next generation of our technology-oriented kids. And we already know that they're pretty ad adept when you throw an iPad into the hands of a five-year-old. So we're thinking, well, what's going to extend them and what's going to bring them into the next round of, of really advanced um, education around technologies? Um, high bandwidth was kind of a given one of those city assumptions. But we were actually changing the school model to more of a, a decentralized and a hybrid type approach 
that might change with age so that you have you know, some um, in-classroom activity but also you have some out-of-classroom education. Uh, maybe for the older kids it's more like the working from home type model where they're interacting online and therefore the school is broader than just the bricks and mortar of the school that you might go to when you're a little kid. So into your sort of, you know, um, teen type years, you're actually getting a broader education because it's an electronic one that interacts with kids anywhere across the country or the world, as long as the subjects and the syllabus kind of make sense. Um, we also had uh, a degree of virtual agent, um, whether it's an artificial intelligent bot, uh, looking at one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, around specific uh, topics or subjects. We also had kind of a daycare type approach um, where I guess it's a slightly more intelligent version for both the technology and the kid um, than parking them in front of the TV. It's something that's a bit more interactive. Um, and we certainly had uh, the aspect, Marta, from your perspective, of being able to bring this into um, kind of coaching and explaining uh, some of the social interaction elements. Because whilst we're a highly technology-oriented family in a highly technology-oriented town, we still want our kids to be humans. So we then went into more of the areas for how do we explain some of the social context and maybe some of those questions and you know that interaction can happen through virtual agents um, and our kids. But we also like to pick up on our hiking and biking and our outdoor activity part of our persona by having parks, trails and community areas that have all of the intelligence around um, safety and security, you know, lighting on trails, not just as you're using it, but maybe there's some sensor type um, IoT sort of gadgets that are, are coming into that. Um, but also having a, a reason for being outdoors and a reason for taking a break from technologies. Um, and in our case, this was looking at um, the accessibility of where those trails, um, parks, community areas, reasons to interact with humans making the city lay out the city infrastructure, making it as easy as possible for people to participate. So that, Tom, to your point, you don't have to sit in traffic for 45 minutes to get to the beach or the park or the mountains. You, you've got some kind of accessibility right there that you can be utilizing. Um, we had a big focus on security and safety and utilizing technology to do that. Um, we were having some interesting discussion around how we track our kids um, whether it's with wearables or whether we get as far as actually implanting them with some kind of little you know, nanotechnology device that can uh, be for their safety and our uh, assurance. Um, we like the idea of adopting uh, frictionless payment, so again, making it easy as possible, and there are probably some crime-related uh, benefits to the city that we didn't get uh, time into. And then we were looking um, at the, the final point that had quite some discussion around being new to the U.S., and we took a differentiation of this is not just about moving from city to city within a country necessarily. Maybe there's something behind. Why is our persona about new to the US? So we looked there at some of the, culturals, um, the, the cultural and values uh, assumptions and how do we create that expectation in the city that there is a, for lack of any other expression, a welcoming nature to it. But we're also looking at how do you ensure that there is a, a diversity and a multinational approach that there are people that are maybe like you and can ensure some continuity of your own culture from whatever your originating country is, right through to having a more broadly uh, international perspective so that there are others that are not from the US. Um, and then getting into, uh, I guess, creating both the infrastructure but the opportunity for having shared interactions and shared experiences and shared interests with other humans in the community of this new city. Thank you. All right, so um, even though we were issued city number two, we are city number one. Looks like city 21. All right, so we're recent college graduates, um, and um, we just landed our first job with 60K a salary. We got a pet. Um, and we're social and athletic, and we don't like to cook, okay? And uh, so our group, um, being um, responsible, capitalistic, competitive analysis people, we send a spy around to all the other cities to um, see what they're up to so that we can make sure that we're not missing something. We know we were spied upon because we are the first to invent the implantable 
kid in pet tracking device. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I thought that drone was an <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's that. So we we we're gonna we want to be the affordable uptown model, really. So that's what we're looking at. Um, we see a lot of wearable tech and embedded tech that's uh, not only in ourselves and our children, but our pets. Um, we see the world a little differently than, than the other cities in that um, I think what I heard today was, um, you know, we want to have telemedicine. Well, what does that mean? Well, for us, telemedicine means um, bring the pod to us that has the operating room, that has the, the x-ray machine or whatever. And those, those items, those pods, those, they're not really vehicles. They're co-located throughout the, our community based on need. So if there's a concert going on or some uh, sporting event down at the American Airlines Center, uh, assuming we're you know, this is near the city, um, then um, <clears throat> then because um, we're in the town of Nirvana, but the, um, the the pods, the, the medical pods, would be a lot more of them co-located with the event because there's more likely a chance uh, statistically that we'll need them there versus at Grandma's house. So, um, so we thought about pods for every kind of asset that we might need. So that could be, you know, road work equipment. It could be building construction equipment. It could be pod, uh, medical pods. Any any fire department. So we talked about fire department. Why well, have a fire department that's located where the city planned it, and then years later there's there's less fires there, or less need for fire department or ambulance services. It really should be over here, but you're not going to, the city's not going to, can't afford to pick up a fire department and move it to a different location. Well, our fire department's all based on pods. So people can be anywhere, the firemen can be on call, and uh, they're not having to sit around and, and they, uh, watch TV in the uh, firehouse all day. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Yeah, good old. Um, yeah, so we're going to fix the vision problem. Um, virtual reality, the virtual reality is going to come and kind of um, a couple of flavors. So, like, instead of just being on a treadmill and having your VR goggles, maybe the treadmill is, is it actually changes texture to rock and, and, and wood and dirt and mud, and you know, so our, our military people can go practice in the mud or whatever. And, um, and, and so you're virtualized that way. Plus, we also know that people want to have still real social interaction. So, um, so not everything you're going to do is going to require VR. So, we need to have still parks and recreation places to go. Of various kinds that we can physically go and meet people. Um, concerts, we talked about like concerts. Virtual reality can play two roles there. One, I can go over to my friend's house, we can all get together, and we can put on our VR goggles and our VR world, and we can watch the concert together like it's a private concert with Pat Benatar or Jimmy Buffett or you know, Pink or something. But um, um, Or we can go and put our VR goggles in stadium mode, and now we're our, our, we're our little group here sitting in one section. But we're a part of the big concert, and we turn, and we can see everything. Um, okay, what am I missing on? Oh, well, okay, because I can't read. Uh, let's see. We, you talked I went about to A&M. I can't read. Wearable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wearable and the embedded tech, um, the other thing that that does besides the, the biometrics, besides the, the connectivity back to the, the doctor's you um, back to the doctor's <laughs> office, um, you know, to, to keep us on our fitness track because we, we want to stay fit. Um, but besides, besides all the med tech, right, that can come from that, it would be the ability to manage traffic control, and that doesn't mean just a car. It could be the elevator. You know, we have elevators now. You go up, you say what floor you want to go to. Okay, well, this starts managing in groups. It's going to know where you're going to need to go in the building, and it's going to time people. No more elevator congestion, no road congestion. If you're going from uh, uptown to, to Frisco for a concert or to catch up with other friends in the Metroplex, you know, you're, you're podding there. Everything is moving by, by pods, by connectivity. And there is... The predictable flow, so there's, there's no queues, no, no turnstiles, no queues. So when you show up at Stars game, you go directly to your right seat, you, you never... There's, there's people in front of you, people behind you, but no one's crowding you either way because it's been perfectly orchestrated timing based on your walk speed and everything else. Exactly, and with all of this management of, of, of time, of, of space, there's also the, the practicalities. You know, my apartment doesn't really need to be so big anymore because uh, there's a lot of VR, there's a lot of tech. I'm social, I'm moving around. You know, I'm going to work, I'm working out, or I'm hanging out with my friends. So I don't need as much space, and, and this is important because... And when we have a party at the house, 
we bring the barbecue pod to our house with the ultra deluxe <laughs> yeah. thing, and it comes to our house, and we have all the cooking stuff we want, and when we're done with the party, we send it on its way. Exactly. The food trucks, they just pop it up by drone, and it shows up for the oh, party. Oh, all the food, we talked about all of our food was going to be... All the food gets goes just anywhere. So you, shows up. Food comes to where you want. So you don't, <laughs> if I want to go to the boat this weekend, because we talk about activities, the food goes to the boat. I don't need to stop by the grocery store on the way or have the grocery store delivered to my house and wait for them only to go to the boat. It's just I go to the boat and the food and the beer yes. are there. So someone mentioned bundling. So yes, there's a bundling not just of your network connectivity but of all the things that you're doing with your lifestyle. And all of that is because we're only making 60 k a year and Uptown's kind of been an expensive place. So we need to, we need to make that um, more livable from a paycheck standpoint. Too. So yeah. I want to do all these things. I want to experience these things, but we've got to have some technology come to help us get these costs down. And we know everybody here has already said they want to come to our city, okay. so we win. <laughs> We're the fun <laughs> ones. Thank you. Okay, it's 9 2 so we're going to wrap up. If you leave me your persona and the yellow sheet that you wrote on, I will write up some notes and send out, here's our future city of the 2030 just so that we can have a little bit of feedback. And I did have put a deck together, so I can send it out if you guys are interested in that as well. All right, thank you everybody. Fantastic brain power support. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Maria and Reza for coming today and presenting this. It was a very different kind of uh, meeting and presentation today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tom? So now that we've got your coffee infused control room, can we do this 45 minutes in the happy hour? So where we're going to find out where Mike's going to these concerts in virtual reality and you wouldn't get caught dead online. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Tell us when you we, we meet you. I do go to Pat Minotaur concert. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hero. And Jimmy Buffett, I was just there. No, no Britney Spears. Not into Britney Spears. I would do pizza. Have you, have you been to pizza? So we're officially over, but we have the room until 1030. So feel free to network and, and visit with people. Uh, I think it's been an awesome uh, day to share. And uh, hopefully you guys will come back next month. Thanks for coming.